My mom was an alcoholic and married an alcoholic, the third husband. I just didn't feel like um, anybody knew I was there. I always felt invisible and it was just always constant chaos and yelling, screaming. When I was five, I wasn't even in school yet, we were living in an apartment. They had just gotten married a few months earlier. And there was this fighting, arguing, and I j it was nighttime. I probably should have already been in bed. I left, and I walked out the door um, and walked down a very busy street in Houston to go to my daycare because I thought that those nice people would be there. <laughs> and of course, they weren't when I got there. And I turned around, I came all the way home. They never, they had not known I'd even left. They just, they never noticed. We bathed ourselves. Nobody read books. Nobody put us to bed or, or uh, well, you know, I mean, there just, there was no parenting. If anything, we parented them. She would drink and throw up and pass out and lay there and, <laughs> um, and that was our home life. And then our, her husband would go to work and come home and he'd usually get home very late and he'd be very drunk and if we were lucky, he would just let us sleep and then he'd go off the next day back to work. But if he was in the mood to have a party, then he'd wake all the kids up and make everybody sing and play musical instruments and <laughs> have a party in the middle of the night on the school night so that he could keep having fun. Eventually, um, my father finally stepped in and took us. And the drastic difference was, was great. I loved being there and he was wonderful. Um, I lived with him for junior high and my freshman, sophomore year, and, and then my dad got sick with cancer, so um, he died. And I had to move back in with her for a year. When my dad died, I just had this gaping hole of the only person that I felt ever loved me was him. And I always knew he loved me, but he was the only person I felt love from, and when he was gone, it was gone. And I just kind of started this journey of self-destruction. I, I did drugs, I hung out with the wrong people, I was just in care. And I, I, I dated people who I thought would love me and who I could fix, and inevitably I would get myself into relationships that were, were worse and terrible and abusive. and. And then I got married, and, and I married a, um, a person that had his own baggage. Whether or not he loved me, I don't know. <laughs> um, but the way he chose to show it was with a lot of control and abuse. I'd leave, and he'd call me back and tell me he was sorry and he needed me to help him be better, and he knew he, knew he could be better and he loved me. And we married in May of 99. We separated in November of 2000. And we stayed separate for a year and a half, and then we divorced in July of 02. And I didn't want to be divorced. I mean, by this time, I felt like I had really grown in, in, in my relationship with God, and I felt like it was complete defeat to be divorced. And, that, and that's why I spent a year and a half being separated, because I just could not make that final decision to be divorced. And the Bible does not say it's okay to divorce because someone's physically abusive. And I, you know, you can try to read what you want into it, but it doesn't say that. And finally, I just said, you know what, God, I'm going to do it. And, you know, um, I'm just, I'm walking away, and I'm going to ask you to just love me through it. And I think that um, from that point on, that part of me that always needed a relationship and that wanted to be loved, I just, it changed and I really started feeling God's love. And, and then I met my husband and, and it took a long road to get to him, but by the time I met him, I think I was ready to fully appreciate him. So I had my son, and then 18 months later, I had my daughter. And I felt an immense amount of pressure to get it right and to not screw it up and to not do what she had done to us. And, and I'm not a patient person at all. 
Um, so having two young children and not being a patient person and trying to do it right but not knowing what right meant was really hard for me. But after my kids were born, I, I went through a very dark depression and just new revelations about, I think about the power of love and how powerful a parent's love in particular can, will make or break people. Um, but I also have learned that when we learn to fill that with God, it makes you stronger. As a child, I did not feel like God was with me. I knew He existed, but I felt like He had, He wasn't with me. He had forsaken me. And I think I finally just realized that He hadn't. And that I just didn't know how to reach out to Him. I feel convinced that I know my worth. If in nobody else, I know my worth with God. I do like me. And I love my husband. And I love my kids. And I think um, about a year and a half ago when I was, I was going for a run and, and, and just in my, what am I doing here? I'm not fit to be a mother. I, you know, my husband deserves a better wife. I just heard God yell at me, you know what, you prayed and prayed to be delivered and I've delivered you, now you need to accept it. And that was the hardest thing is that, yeah, my life's real good now and I, I, I'm learning how to accept it and take it now. My name's Holly, I am a survivor and I have a voice.